This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. High school was the first time I had any real instruction in art. My teacher was a college graduate in art history who encouraged us and introduced us to the great painters and to concepts like perspective, color theory, and technique. For a lesson on abstract art, I remember I did a clumsy painting of a female nude. I got a failing grade, but nobody pulled me out of class by the ear for it. For a class on perspective, I drew a detailed view of the room, showing everything I saw in front of me. I received an A+, plus and was very proud. This time, I felt like I deserved it. At night, I'd go to the public library and head downstairs past the newest class of Mouseketeers to spend hours looking at artists I had only barely heard of. I didn't understand Picasso, and Mondrian did nothing for me. I didn't get the point of mastering all that technique just to make geometric shapes with primary colors. My teacher showed us Chagall, calling his work visual poetry, and it was true. I could see the poetic movement of color. We were introduced to Dolly, the whole class being asked to repeat after the teacher, Sir, realism. Dolly was weird but I was impressed by his imagination and thought I couldn't have come up with that kind of unusual imagery. Pointillism, to me, seemed too laborious. Carefully filling in dots of color on a big canvas seemed like a waste of time. I liked the Impressionists. Their paintings were pretty, and I could recognize talent in them. But to me, all of this modern art lacked soul. What really struck a chord were the old masters and Renaissance painters. Now my mind is trained, but then I used to think, how could they think up all these things? The sky, the angels, the crucifixion, the people and their expressions, the clouds, the light. I thought it was magical that they could do that. I didn't feel that kind of awe about modern painters. I started to learn about artists like Perugino, Verrocchio, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Botticelli. But Leonardo was the greatest hero of them all. Although, when I was young, I was more fascinated by Leonardo the engineer and scientist than Leonardo the artist. I was drawn to his notebooks with their ingenious feats of engineering, his aqualung, his flying machine and parachute, the war machines his intricate studies of human anatomy, the enigma of his mirrored handwriting. You can see how that would have captivated a boy my age. Michelangelo was the first artist I loved solely for his art, the Sistine Chapel and the Pietà. I remember reading as a boy that Michelangelo was only twenty-two when he started working on the sculpture and laboring alone for three years and I remember reading that Michelangelo had heard others saying that his masterpiece had been made by one of his rivals. Outraged, he sneaked into the Vatican and carved his name on the sculpture, the only artwork he ever signed. I don't blame him. It's ironic, considering what I do, but years later when I forged a piece that somebody else claimed, I think I understood what Michelangelo must have felt.